later on BBC Two, more cutting-edge observational comedy from Not the Nine O'Clock News. Meanwhile, here's Kelly Monteith. Now this isn't life. Again, I'm Kelly Monteith, and welcome to segment number um, uh, five. What? Five. Installment number five in Kelly Monteith's BBC Memories, although he can't remember what installment we're doing. At any rate, the um, inspiration for that little scene that you just saw was um, back in the 70s, 80s, they used to have all these commercials where it showed couples in a pasture running toward each other. They actually showed them in, in Britain as well. So that was the inspiration for that, um, what kind of the horrible things happen um, in reality. Now, it's Suzanne and I, or Gabrielle, that played my wife, uh, Suzanne, in the, in the series. Um, we did a lot of things about the domestic problems that couples have. And one of the things um, I think we alluded to earlier that I was very sleepy and I'm terrible to wake up. And that's the little scene that we're going to do now is when I go into the bathroom and I get the cans mixed up and um, I put the wrong kind of deodorant under my arms. And this is what happened. Now when you're in that condition, all aerosols look alike. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize my mistake till we went to the cinema. Suzanne had dragged me to one of those arty Italian movies that has absolutely no basis in reality. Carapollo per tonno parasatoto. Mazzarini. I can't get a petite, it's a favor. I'm a caro, go to the petite. Get out the long way. If I'm not. realized I had used shaving cream instead of deodorant. <laughs> Suzanne insisted upon leaving there and then. <laughs> and naturally, it was raining. Yeah, there's a lot 
lot to learn about being married. That's one reason I'm glad I waited, because, well, until you learn to know and live with yourself, it's damn difficult to learn to live with somebody else. Boy, we had our difficulties. It seemed like little things would always uh, be difficult, like the bathroom, I'm telling you. Now, whoever designed the bathroom had to live alone, because it's impossible for, the, for two people to get ready at the same time in the average size bathroom without creating friction. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Ah, I found out how Vincent Van Gogh lost his ear. He shared a bathroom with his mistress. <laughs> Did you watch that? <laughs> Probably the worst experience, though, was the day the plumber had been to our place to fix the shower. Oh, Kitty, by the way, don't forget the plumber switched the hot and cold taps around. <laughs> now, it seems like this happening every day of the week, naturally, it would cause no end to argument. And like most couples, we had to learn to argue intelligently. Because in the beginning, instead of communicating our feelings and frustrations, well, our arguments would quickly degenerate into childish name-calling. Oh, for God's sake. Idiot! Dimwit! <laughs> Pink squeak! <laughs> squeak! <laughs> Goofball! Boys, <laughs> women drive you crazy. <laughs> That's when it became a challenge. Ah, here it is. Ancient curses. <laughs> Toad sucker. Peeker. Ass flicker. Ass flicker. That's the first thing in here. You've well, been looking at my book. I've been looking at my book. You snuck in my room looking like it's not true. So our arguing continued. I seem to spend a lot of time naked in these shows for some unknown reason. Uh, in fact, um, there was a clip, an outtake of that little scene that was shown on one of those blooper shows with Dick Clark. Uh, I had those blooper shows. Because um, when I came out of the shower naked um, with my hands over my privates, I slipped and fell. I mean, I went boom. My feet went in the air, and I fell right on my um, on my ass. And um, they use that as an outtake. They use it on one of those uh, blooper shows. <laughs> so I I seem to be naked everywhere. At any rate, um, this next scene is uh, this. The scene was about um, Suzanne and I having arguments. And uh, initially in, in the show, we we did argue. And I, I really got an insight about how much energy it takes to argue. When you're in the middle of an argument, you don't realize how much energy you're putting out, but when you have to pretend one and, you know, argue as if you're arguing, it's a lot of energy. I couldn't believe it. But anyway, we solve our problem by having a romantic dinner. And this is she and I uh, having this romantic dinner in a restaurant with one of the, um, one of the things that happened probably, I don't know how many people have had this happen to them when you get these the strolling musicians that come to your table and how awkward that is. That's basically what this scene. And by the way, this, uh, this whole show was um, sent to the Montreux Comedy Festival. Um, and we got, uh, we finished behind uh, Not the Nine O'Clock News. Um, they didn't, they, they got the golden rose. They didn't have a silver rose in those days. They do now. But um, we came in second, which was, it was okay. I mean, I didn't mind losing to them, except they had a list of writers that long, and mine was just Neil and me. At any rate, um, this is the scene of a romantic restaurant uh, with a little bottle of champagne 
and uh, the annoyance that um, comes with it. What's this uh, veal a la maison? Ah, now that is thin slices of veal with a cream sauce with champignon, then stuffed with pâté de foie gras, then baked in a wafer-thin pastry cell for precisely 32 and a half minutes. Sounds wonderful. It is wonderful. One veal a la maison. Veal a la maison, excellent choice. But I'm on a diet. <laughs> 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 see what's good for a diet. When did you go on a diet? This afternoon. <clears throat> Let's see, chicken's good for a diet. Mm -hmm. Say, do you have any chicken? <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir, uh, we do have chicken. We have chicken Kiev, chicken supreme, chicken surprise, chicken a la king. We have roast chicken, boiled chicken, fried chicken. We have chicken fricassee, chicken croquettes, chicken vol au vent. We have chicken legs, chicken wings, chicken breasts, and chicken feed. What was that fourth one again? <laughs> why, why didn't you just order me a steak? Okay, later we'll have a sirloin steak. Sirloin steak. Yeah. And for sir. Oh, he'd have a Dover so. I will. You will. <laughs> okay. Um, may I see the wine list, please? <laughs> now, yes. but the toast. So you might recognize the man I was peeing next to is Michael Stanton, who we used um, in the very beginning of this uh, on segment one, or installment one. He was the uh, cab driver, then he was a mechanic, and now he's the uh, other customer that's um, peeing next to me. I, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got some laughs out of it. Um, it's one of my favorite uh, episodes. And um, we'll be back next Friday with installment number six, episode number six. And I hope you tune in. I hope you're getting some laughs out of this. I hope you enjoy it. It's a, kind of a, a trip down memory lane for me because I haven't seen these shows for God knows how many years. So it's kind of a kick, you know? So I hope you indulge me. At any rate, enjoy yourself and um, I will see you next week. <laughs> Shall we have our drinks on the balcony? Oh. Of course, you mad romantic fool. You finally noticed. I did. <laughs> oh, about that toast, by the way. Yes, yes. about that toast. <laughs>